Hi, hello everyone. Uh, first, I want to thanks for this opportunity to present our work here. So today I want to talk to you about our uh, new method, uh, simple open source method to do highly multiplex image on tissue. So we call it uh, tissue slicing. Okay, so I just want to briefly go through the method with you. If you can go to the method section right now, so the cyclic sif is short for cyclic immunofluorescence. Basically, what you try to do here is just like your regular immunofluorescence, but you can do it multiple times. The reason we can do this is we use a chemistry that combines hydrogen peroxide plus a little bit sodium hydroxide. So that will effectively remove all the fluorophore after you're done with staining. So as you can see uh, here in the method section, we have four cycle or four steps on one cycle. First, you do your staining with the fluorophore conjugate antibody. Then you can stain with your uh, nucleus, that's with Hurst or DEPI, anything you want. Then uh, later on, you can try to image all the things. Then you got your first image done then in the last step of the cycle, you try to erase these things. And the erase using the chemistry, we're talking about the hydrogen peroxide reagent. So then you can repeat this cycle multiple times. As you can see, uh, so I probably need to do down here. I just try to show you a quick example that uh, we have a, a slide, actually a tonsil, human tonsil. We, before you do the staining, you can start to see some background fluorescence, but it's okay because we recall all this information before you stain, and after you staining, you can compare before and after. And the third thing you can do is uh, you can erase all this signal afterward, and then stain again with a new antibody. Now you can start to see all the changes in the staining pattern, and you can do this so on and so forth. And the good thing of this method is it's very simple. So it's not, you don't require any special instrument and it's very effective as you can see right here. All, most four of we has been tested, been effectively removed in a short amount of time. In time scale here, we are talking about one hour. And then we test multiple four of that all work with the same chemistry so you can pretty much just buy any kind of the commercial antibody that's conjugate with the fluorophore we indicate here, then do your uh, cyclic immunofluorescence. So maybe some people worry about antigenicity because all this kind of chemistry may destroy your sample. And we've been tested it very carefully as you can see down the corner here. Try to do it again. So you can see right here the figure show that uh, after four rounds of staining, we try to do the same antibody again and again. We don't see a significant difference, but only caveat maybe come with this method since the sample do require multiple times of staining. So you can see right down here in your uh, uh, left uh, down corner, so some tissue maybe go over multiple cycles. We've been tested up to 20 cycles now. Some tissue maybe fall off in like eight or seven cycles. So this need to be further optimization. But for the old tissue we can test, we can go through like at least a seven cycle without any problem. So uh, from here, I want to show you one thing really quick, because this is nothing different from your traditional immunofluorescence. So you can do a really high resolution or high quality image and even get subcellular localization. So here I just quickly show you a 10 cycle staining that with the various marker. And now we can zoom in to try to see a marker. For example, like this case, we do a LAMIN staining or violenting or equivalent you can see a clear uh, compartment between your violentin and the hecadurin, as well as for the lamin, you can see a nice ring surround your nucleus that's indicate right subcellular localization. And the, if you are thinking, uh, 
So for this kind of method, you not only get a nice picture of your sample, but also we develop uh, some sort of the homemade script to allow you to quantify your data in single cell level. So now you can get multiple uh, reading in single cell. And uh, as here is the one example, we do a uh, uh, immunostaining for four different color and we can represent it here as a dot plot. So now you can know each standing. And in this case, we actually can do this for at least 20 markers. So you can do some sort of high dimensional clustering analysis as you can show here to show nice uh, subcellular lo uh, localization as well as like subpopulation within your cell. And the one interesting application for this kind of method definitely is on the immuno-oncology side. You can try to start to differentiate. So in this case, we have a renal cell carcinoma here. So we can differentiate tumor versus the stroma or the immune cell very clearly. So now we can quantify all this cell in different compartment in a relatively easy way. And to also further demonstrate the power of our method, we try to use the tissue microarray with various type of tissue. And now we can start to see this kind of beautiful representation, although I don't have time to go through the detail right here. But now we color coded each sample with different color and try to represent a high dimensional data in a two dimensional way. And now you can see that this method clearly separate different tissue out from each other. But for some case, we do see uh, some sort of interaction between different tissue. That's indicate you might have a de degeneration of the tumor in this case. And all this kind of the method can be used to detail study your like tumor differentiation, tissue to tissue variation, as well as a lot of application we, we cannot describe right here. Okay, for the last thing I want to show you is, uh, so as many of you may know, uh, the heterogeneity in the tumor tissue may be an important topic that uh, people want to understand. And uh, we are thinking our method will be particularly useful in this case, because now we just show you one, uh, or actually this is the three color standing. We try to uh, label the EGFR or the phosphor earth and uh, also the nucleus standing. Try to see how much heterogeneity you can get from this particular tumor. This is a GBN sample that we got from the patient. So you can see some tumors strongly stand for one marker versus the other. But it's hard to do that in a traditional pathology way because you typically just look at multiple regions and you try to come up with a conclusion. If we can use our method, we pretty much just scan all the sample. Then we can represent a quantitative analysis of how heterogeneity in here we show up three different markers try to see how the uh, special heterogeneity you can get from the tissue. And then we can do a more detailed quantification analysis to show like different cluster in the special and also try to look at quantitatively how this cluster represent in different uh, spatial localization. All this can be done with relatively simple uh, experimental procedure as well as all our software will be open uh, to public. So you can try to see if you found this interesting and we are happy to help you to set up your own experiment. And to that, I want to thank uh, my funding source and also my uh, advisor, Peter Sober, and also the Harvard uh, Lab of System Pharmacology. Thanks for your attention.